In this video, we're going to continue to explore the derivative and the tangent line. I think it's helpful to always have at our reference the go-to formula for laying out tangent line equations. The line that approximates the function is going to be found by evaluating the function at the center, evaluating the derivative at the center, and multiplying that by x minus the center. And as a reminder, this is just a modified version of the point-slope form or the Taylor form. Those are some other names used. So this is the way I like to lay it out in class. We need to know where our center is and we need to be able to evaluate the function and the derivative. In example three, we're given the location of three different centers. So center one is two, center two is zero, and center three is negative one, which means if we are going to evaluate the function at those three points, we're going to get the three coordinates, coordinate pairs, so that we can plug in right here and right here. So f of two is two to the third minus two squared, which is eight minus four f of 0 is 0 cubed minus 0 squared, which is 0. And then f of negative 1 is negative 1 cubed minus negative 1 squared. And that's going to be negative 1 subtract positive 1, which is a value of negative 2. Okay, so we have our centers, we have our y-coordinates, and now we just need to find the derivative. And the formal definition of the derivative is going to be f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. This is the limiting process on the difference quotient to find the derivative. And we have a pretty tricky uh, equation here when it comes to expanding this all out. And what would need to happen is you would need to either use Pascal's triangle or foil this twice in order to handle that x cubed thing or power. I'm going to go ahead and write out what it expands to. That's just the x plus h cubed is those three, four terms. And then we'll continue working our way across the top. Minus 2x minus 2h minus x cubed plus 2x over h. I have no idea why I wrote 0 there. I don't know what my brain was thinking. That's really good. Equals f prime of x. And then we want to go through the process of canceling the things that cancel. And we see negative 2x cancels positive 2x, and x cubed cancels with negative x cubed. And what's left behind, this has an h in it, h, h, h. And there's an h in the denominator, so if we were to factor the h out of the numerator, That would be our expression. And we can then cancel the h out of the numerator and denominator. And if we plug 0 in for h now, we do, know, do not have a divide by 0 error. And plugging 0 in for h gives us 3x squared plus 0 plus 0 minus 2. And we find our derivative is 3x squared minus 2. And that's one of the very first things that we want to find out. There's our derivative. Now, I agree that this was pretty heavy on the algebra side, 
And it's exciting to me to know that in the future, we're going to start to develop techniques for doing this process more rapidly. But for now, we're still using the formal definition of the derivative before we start learning our shortcuts. Once we know our derivative, we can evaluate the derivative at our three centers. So f prime of two, f prime of zero, and f prime of negative one. The reason I want to evaluate it at the center is because if I'm gonna set up a tangent line, I need the slope at that center. And we wanna do it three times. So f prime of two is three times two squared minus two, which equals 10, four, 12, yep. Yeah. F prime of zero would be three times zero squared minus two, which is negative two. And F prime of negative one is three times negative one squared minus two, which is one. So there we have it. We have our centers, we have our functions evaluated at our centers, and we have our derivatives evaluated at our centers. So now we should be able to set up three tangent lines, which I'll call L1 of X, L2 of X, and L3 of X. All of these are going to be used to approximate the function. If we're close to the number two, we're going to use this center. So f of the center is four plus f prime of the center, 10, times x minus the center. So f of c plus f prime of c times x minus c. We go down the line and continue to do that for each center. So the center here of zero, f of zero is zero, f prime of zero is negative two, and x minus zero. And then finally on the third one, our center was at negative one, so f of the center is negative two, plus f prime of the center is one, and then x minus the center. So there we have it, there's three equations. Now the question framework didn't say find the tangent line equations, but I'm adding that into the notes because that's something that I want to uh, make a, a good habit of. So as a review, what we did is we used the difference quotient and limited it to evaluate the derivative. We plugged in x plus h into the function and x into the function. And then we expanded the numerator so that terms would cancel. Then we factored the h's out so the h cancels. And then we plugged zero in for h, which caused the middle two terms to disappear or cancel. And there's our derivative. Many, many problems in calculus, at least the first half of the year, will start off with finding the derivative. Unfortunately for us, we will have a shorter method in the long run for finding a derivative than this. But for now, this is all we can do. Then we use that information to calculate the slopes so that we could create tangent line equations, all which approximate the function. Okay. Let's do it again in example four. The limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And this is our derivative equation. f of x plus h would be negative root x plus h minus f of x, which would be root x all over h. There's our derivative. And we did a warm-up the other day that showed us a method for solving these radical ones. They, there's not an obvious solution. You 
using like getting rid of the parentheses and applying the exponent. The technique that we used is we multiplied the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. And this is why I am thankful that we're going to learn shortcuts in the future because this thing just looks needlessly challenging. The conjugate consists of taking the same expression and then flipping the sign of the adder or subtractor. In this case it was add, so we made it a minus. If we do this and do it correctly, it should cancel out radicals in the numerator. So the first term times this first term, let's put parentheses around there. These two multiply to give you x plus h. These two multiply to give you positive root x, root x plus h. And these two multiply to give you negative root x, root x plus h. And therefore our outsides cancel our insides. And then our last is just subtract x. Now, when we execute this, what we see is terms should start to cancel. The x cancels with the minus x, and the h cancels with the h, leaving just a, a 1 in the numerator. And now if I do the limit or find the limit of this fraction, I can now plug 0 in for h. And that would give me 1 over negative 2 root x. Okay. This is the formal process by finding the derivative. Thankfully, there will be a better way in the future. We're only a couple days away from that. Okay, so we have our derivative, and they say find the slopes at the point 4, negative 2. So they're asking the question, what is f prime of 4? Well, f prime of 4 would be 1 over negative 2 root 4, which is 1 over negative 2 times 2, which is negative 1 fourth. So if we wanted to set up our tangent line equation, we can approximate the function with our tangent line by plugging in all the things that we know. f of the center, that's what is the y-coordinate at 4. Well, they gave us the y-coordinate at 4. That was very nice of them. Plus f prime of the center. What is the slope at the center? Well, the slope of the center is negative 1 fourth times x minus the center. We are centering it at 4. So this is the process of two things. One, finding the derivative, and two, finding the tangent line equation at that center. Oftentimes we want to find the tangent line, but sometimes there's other things we want to do with the derivative. Okay. Finally, they ask a follow-up question. What is the behavior of the graph at 0, 0? And this is kind of a, a separate issue, but I want to talk about it. Visually, we can think about what does this graph look like. We have the square root function that has been reflected over the y-axis. So the square root function looks something like this. And at 0, 0, we have an end point. Because there is an endpoint, f prime of zero should not exist. Okay. The reason for that has to do with something that we'll explore more in depth actually in calculus class, and it's talking about the idea of differentiability. We have slopes that exist all the way along this line 
but as soon as we hit zero, zero, slopes don't exist on the right-hand side, and so we can't say the slope is approaching the same value from both sides. So f prime of zero should not exist. And if we look at our derivative equation and plug zero into it, we in fact do get a derivative that does not exist. Okay. This concept of a non-differentiable point will be explored, explored more later. But that is it for the notes today. And starting, starting with the next notes, we actually get into some of the uh, shortcuts so we can drop this lengthy process. Um, though there is still a great deal of importance in knowing that process. So don't think I taught it fruitlessly. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.